Shalom, Yehuda Glick, Shalom Jerusalem Foundation, once again, the daily chapter. And today, we will be studying Genesis chapter 3. Before I begin, I really want to share with you uh, that this lesson will be for the beloved memory of a dear leader, a lover of God, a champion, giant, servant of Hashem, God Almighty, a lover of God, of His Torah, and His land and His people. I'm talking today about Bishop Scott Mwanza from Zambia. He was very active in relationship between Israel and Africa. He, he studied Torah, Every time we were in touch, he asked me if I can send him another book and another book about to understand more what God wants from us and to be closer to Hashem and to His people and to His land. So I will devote to this study today of Genesis 3 in His beloved memory. Today, uh, after we studied yesterday and the day before about the creation of the world, creation 1 and creation 2, creation in the perspective of chapter of Genesis 1 where everything is wonderful, everything is in place, everything is great and uh, God put, created the world in order and man was created last. That was the hierarchy in chapter 1. Chapter 2 began the opposite. Man was created first and everything was created for his sake and God put him in Garden of Eden. Today we're in chapter 3. Actually, it's a third world being created. But if chapter 1 and chapter 2, the world was created by God, in the beginning God created heaven and earth. In Genesis 2, we saw, This is the description of the creation of the world when a God created it, God Hashem Elohim, the story of the heaven and earth when they were created, when Hashem made heaven and earth. Today, chapter 3, we have the creation of the world, not by God Elohim, not by Adonai Elohim, but actually a creation of the world by He who was created in the image of God, and that is man. And it begins actually with the snake, the serpent, who was the shrewdest of all the wild beasts that Hashem had created. He was there trying to put his finger on the problematics of mankind so that mankind should learn. Chapter 2, everybody was in harmony. Man was in harmony with God. God even brought him the most great, precious present, his wife. Man was in harmony with his wife. He was so excited. This is the time! Finally, I have my soulmate. Man was in harmony with nature. They weren't in competition. He was in harmony with the trees, with the animals. He called them names. He referred to them. He looked at them. Chapter 3 is a world where man is concentrating on himself and he loses the harmony. The serpent who tries to point out the negative sides or the dangerous sides of mankind says to the, the woman, to Eve, Did Hashem really say that you should not eat from the trees of the garden? Now he knew that God didn't say we should not eat from the trees of the garden. But he wanted to hear the response by, by Eve. And she right away said, the woman, she said, she replied, we may eat from the fruits of the other trees of the garden. It's only about the fruit and the tree in the middle of the garden that Hashem said, you shall not eat 
or touch it lest you die. When God created in chapter 2 the world, he said, eat all the trees of the garden. Everything. As it says in chapter 2, and Hashem commanded men saying, chapter verse 16, every tree of the garden you are free to eat. Not free to eat. Eat! Achol tochel. Only one tree. But she said, we can eat the tree. She never mentioned God when God saying to eat. Where did she mention God? You shall not eat from the tree that is in the center and you shall not touch it. God who's was so optimistic and said, eat whatever you want. Just one tree, don't eat. She said, we can eat the other trees, but the one tree God said, don't eat it, don't touch. God didn't say, don't touch. But automatically, she told them, she blamed God, even if it was subconsciously, that he put limitations. One small limitation, one tree not to eat. She said, no, he said, don't touch it and don't get close to it. And then she didn't even say, one tree. The tree in the, in the center of the garden, the most important tree. And then she looks, by the way, she doesn't look at the tree. She looks at the, pr- the tr- fruit of the tree. And she saw that the tree was good to be eaten in the light of the eyes. It was good for her. God in chapter 1 says he saw it, the light was good. He saw that the heaven was good. He saw <clears throat> that the Plants were good. Their identity was good. Their very characteristic was good. She wasn't looking at She was looking at the tree. How could it serve me? And immediately, the serpent puts his finger and he says to the, to, the, to the woman, you know why God told you not to eat it? Because if you eat it, you're going to be like God. And there again, the serpent is touching on one of the weaknesses of mankind. Suddenly, he has an ability even a small hint that he has an uh, ability to be like God. Oh my, I, I have no limitations. I have a possibility of being like God. And then she goes, she doesn't want to be alone with this. She knows she did something wrong. She doesn't want to be alone. And she gives it to him, to Adam. And then they see the negative parts of themselves. Their eyes are opened and they perceive that they were naked. Their nakedness didn't bother them when they were looking at the essence of things of the world. When did it start bothering them? When they were concentrating on themselves. Suddenly they heard God looking for them. What do they do? They're hiding. Who are they hiding from? Well, officially from God. But really, from themselves. And God said, Where are you? He said, well, I heard your sound, uh, your voice, and I, I was afraid. Who told you that you were naked? Once again, another weakness of man. He didn't say, please, God, punish me, do whatever you want, but please, protect my wife, don't, don't touch her. She, she gave it to me. The woman that you gave me. And I'm subconscious blames his beloved wife and his creator. And then he talks to the woman and he says to her, what happened? She says, Hanachash hishi'ani Hishi'ani The serpent duped me. And the word duped in Hebrew is hishi'ani which is put together from two words ish and isha. There we are. You can't run away. You can't get yourself lost. It's Ish, Isha, and Ani. If you concentrate on yourself, you'll be easily pushed aside by every single serpent, by every single wind, by the weakest wind. You have to be yourself. But from now on, life is going to be with more difficulties, with more challenges. Bearing children will be painful. Eating will be a a challenge. But God said, I will protect you in one way. On the one hand, I will give you clothing. Now that you know, 
now that your nakedness interferes with you, I will cover it so that it won't stand in front of you and you won't see yourself only negative. But on the other hand, I will also block the road for eternity for mankind. Because the only way you can really connect to eternity is by connecting to God, not by turning yourself into a God. So here we are. In a chapter that God, that man's relationship with God, man's relationship with nature, man's relationship with his wife, man's relationship with the world of animals, which in chapter 2 was all so harmonic, so warm, so calm, no competition. Chapter 3, every one of those relationships is affected. God's, man is hiding from God. Man is not listening to God. Man and his wife are blaming each other. Man and the world of animals is in friction. And man, once again, is threatened by trees. And man is actually in trouble with himself. The world mankind is creating can survive if we concentrate on improving this world, on upgrading this world, on creating this world into a place, a better place. If we concentrate on doing what we have to do, overcoming the pain. But if we concentrate only on ourselves, then we won't enjoy the tree, we'll only enjoy the fruit of the tree. We won't enjoy true relationship because we are caring about ourselves. And the Torah tells us in chapter 3, the true relationship between man and woman is when they care and love each other. The true relationship between man and God is when they're not in competition. And man understands that he has to be connected to God and not to try to be a God. And then, man will not be ashamed will not want to hide from God, will not want to hide from himself. And then, man will live in the eternity of God. Ever from then, in all of our holidays, we try once again to get a feeling of living with God in the Garden of Eden as much as we can. But here, not concentrating on ourselves, but caring for others, for those who are in need, and for those who are obligated to bring them the happiness of God. Shalom and blessings to all of you from Jerusalem. And I will just conclude by reminding and remembering and mentioning my dear friend, Bishop Scott Mwanda, Mwanza, who passed away last night. He was a servant of God. He cared about God. He didn't care about himself. He had nothing to be ashamed of. And he was building the relationship between Israel and Africa and God. Let his memory be in our hearts forever. Let him rest in peace. Shalom from Jerusalem. Keep in touch. Share this with others. Share with me your thoughts. Partner with us at shalomjerusalem.org.